Hi there, I'm Anthony Chung and I'm the Head of Market Analysis here at Amplify Trading. Every weekday morning I'll deliver a fundamental rundown ahead of the European Open. But if you subscribe to the channel, you'll also get content from the rest of the team. So, let's begin. Good morning. It is Tuesday the 6th of October. I thought I would uh, start on that dramatic note of the President coming back to the White House uh, in his chopper, no less. Uh, but yeah, of course, that being the, the big news uh, from yesterday, uh, as promised, he has now departed hospital and returned to the White House and definitely as strange as that might sound, that was taken as quite a, a, a positive late when he tweeted that actually before he actually left in itself physically. Uh, we did see a bit of a pop into the close on Wall Street to finish firmly higher across the board and that general sentiment has fed through into the Asia Pacific session. Um, quick look at things then and I'm going to wrap up some of the news headlines from overnight and this was what Trump tweeted uh, last night. I'll be leaving the Great Walter Reed Medical Center feeling really good. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. We have developed under the Trump administration some really great drugs, drugs and knowledge. I feel better than I did 20 years ago. And the market actually did respond to that. And we did see a bit of a pop higher last night. And I'm just going to bring up the S&P chart here for the moment to have a look at. And this was a little jump that we saw last night here, right on the right hand side. But let me just remove my my webcam for just one moment. So really strong push higher yesterday. And, and actually, we'll go back to that chart that we've been, we've been kind of running over the course of the last week or so, which um, has the complete narrative of the really topsy-turvy price action we've witnessed in the S&P 500 over the last, just this is just the last week. This isn't 2020, this is the last week of 2020. Um, and here, just drawing your eyes to the two main points, which is the, the red boxes here. Trump test positive for COVID was here. And if you actually look at where we closed last night, we literally closed out at the peak. So you can see here, we had a brief rejection of what was going into the late European afternoon, uh, a double top at around that previous high that we had printed back at the beginning on the 1st of October and it just busted through that on the back of the Trump tweet that he is in fact going to leave hospital. Uh, and now actually that providing a bit of an area of support for any price action that we're looking out for on the intraday basis if we do come back down to 33, uh, 38 and obviously now looking for perhaps a little bit of consolidation I would say. Um, that fast money move that we saw on the technical breach through that area of resistance, I don't think it's too surprising to see us push up to, as you can see here, right up to bang on 3,400. So the psychological level now providing an area of obstacle of resistance. And you can see that has also played out in the Asia Pacific session. So at the moment, um, not looking to be too interested until we make or break on either side of these particular ranges for the time being. Um, and on the daily chart, you know, we're coming right back up towards that area of that long-term um, trend line that we had had in play all the way back from the recovery of the rally from April um, depths, if you like, on the retest in May, and June, and September, uh, and now we're on the the bottom side of that trend line, but coming up to that retest, and we're at 3,400 is quite a key level. Uh, obviously, it does encapsulate that previous all-time high that we saw um, before the pandemic really hit. And then also was an air of resistance back in mid-August before the eventual push out that we saw to all-time record highs. Uh, so quite a key area here on the upside, uh, as well as symbolically moving back to 3,400. But for the moment, I wouldn't be too surprised if we just get a bit of a period of consolidation here between these upper and lower boundaries uh, of 3,400. 
uh, and really 3388 is what we're looking at here would be key areas to look at for the rest of today uh, but elsewhere then other stock futures have followed suit as I said overnight in the Asia Pacific session and yesterday really one thing I was looking at last night which was um, quite surprising because I wasn't sat at my desk for most of yesterday was the performance of the US 10 year and just having a look at that here you can see really quite a sharp down tick that we saw um, this is going from um, well this was at the end of last week so this is looking a little bit toward them um, when the payroll release came out and then going into the uh, first commencement of trade on Monday and we declined a, a, a good amount. If you actually look on the daily though, quite an interesting area here uh, that we've got to now, which is on the on the bottom side, an area here you can see of resistance or excuse me, support going back to um, late August where we bounced and then also bringing into play the 2nd of July, but generally has acted as a bit of a range here on, on the downside and yeah, a, a decent push higher in in yields yesterday with that equity strength and, and generally the read across here is a couple of things. For one, um, in the fixed income market specifically, uh, the prospects of rising treasury debt issuance on this uh, expectation of further US fiscal stimulus uh, created pronounced bear steepening in rates, essentially um, long end rates rising faster than short term given the expectation of then the recovery that would ensue in future inflation given the fact then uh, if fiscal stimulus is forthcoming in the near term and what that could mean then later on down the line. Uh, it does also come ahead of threes, tens, thirties treasury offerings we're going to get basically kicking off today, Wednesday, Thursday respectively and furthermore there were several corporate issuers uh, including Pepsi and Berkshire Hathaway who both priced 10 year tranches. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with what that means, essentially what you can see is a little bit of downside pressure in the main benchmark 10-year in the intraday space in the futures market whenever there's competing amounts of supply. Uh, and that can come in the form of kind of high quality corporate debt, particularly when it's issuing the same um, debt maturity, i.e. a 10-year. And so that then can take away from some of the short-term intraday demand then for the US 10-year. And then also, uh, there was a slew of high yield offerings, many desks noting a, a likely rush to launch riskier bond deals before entering a perceived pickup in volatility as we go into this US election. Remember the US election is not just going to be a one and done deal, uh, done and conclusive at the beginning of November, it's like to drag out for the entire month. So perhaps then um, a lot of these um, other high yield offerings looking to come to market in order to preempt that period of kind of blackout that they won't be able to come um, and, and, and get rid of that issuance. So a couple of things there I think which created a fairly pronounced reaction in the fixed income market yesterday but certainly the US 10 year uh, is at quite a key level of support that's worth keeping an eye on. The other thing of course is uh, the combination of um, the positive developments on Trump and also a little bit of movement on the stimulus front. Remember, I mean, these were the two key factors that we were commenting on that would be really pivotal for market sentiment and direction uh, yesterday. And we'll continue to do so um, throughout the rest of the coming days for this week. Um, but the positive risk tone did see the dollar offered yesterday. Uh, the dollar's crept up a little bit here into the European Open. It's basically flat in the Dixie at the moment, and that's largely reflected in the major pairs. Not too much movement in the overnight session. But both euro dollar and cable obviously moved higher yesterday, predominantly on the back of that um, dollar weakness. And that came irrespective of the fact that ISM Services Index surprised to the upside with the headline printing at 57.8 against expectations of 56.3. So if anything, it was kind of a, a, a unwind of risk premium into the dollar, just general renewed risk appetite. This was all very much Monday session. Um, equally so, um, obviously um, these positive signals that we talked about is going to um, give a, an underlying support to crude futures um, WTI crude you can see here put in a really stellar day yesterday uh, and we rallied quite sharply uh, going from really a $37 handle all the way up to nearly 40 bucks. Uh, main thing people are looking at here as oil has put in its biggest daily gain since May. Growing optimism, more fiscal US stimulus forthcoming, Trump leaving hospital following his COVID treatment, dollar weakness as well also helping the complex of course. 
uh, from yesterday's move. Sim simultaneously, this is overlaid with Tropical Storm Delta. Uh, I'll just quickly show you that on my chart here because it might be one that you're not too familiar with at the moment, but Delta is quite far out at the moment from actually close proximity to the, the sensitive Gulf of Mexico. But if we click here and you can see the directional movement it is anticipated to be moving um, that way and so definitely warrants keeping an eye on uh, as it drifts towards the Gulf of Mexico. It is poised to clip the Yucatan Peninsula before coming or becoming uh, a record 10th storm to hit the US this season. Uh, it's been frequent um, weather activity in this particular region which definitely warrants monitoring closely. Uh, but yeah, just having a look at oil here, I'll put it back onto a, a daily chart and you know, this this rectangle here was the key area of support that we were talking about at the back end of last week. Uh, that combining then the initial high that we saw on the aggressive gap down at the beginning of March and that failed OPEC meeting that we saw on that outbreak of the price war between Saudi and Russia. Uh, and then we had the retest that came in the early part, 8th, 9th of September, has provided a bit of a force for price. And it has continued to do so once again here, uh, most recently on Friday, before we've, we've sprung back up in towards now sitting at around the uh, 21 day and 200 day moving average. Moving then closer toward what's been going on, uh, and I did mention um, Trump, of course, uh, and we did briefly look at the stock market. Um, the stock market actually, if we go back just briefly to the S&P here, I just wanted to, to measure up something and that was the fact of how short lived this, this uh, sell off has been since Trump um, tested positive and if I actually look at things we are sharply higher than where we were even before that news broke and if I put my currency indicator on, if we take the low of the morning of that news breaking on Trump to where we were at the peak of yesterday's price activity, you can see there, if you can see in my mouse, we have gained 3% since that low. And that basically is in market activity given the weekend close, around 24 hours worth of price action. So a really powerful rally that's been observed. And what can you expect from the president? Well, none other than him tweeting about the great stock market being higher, um, in combination with that dramatic video, he did another pre um, address, if you like, from the White House, which he's been doing consistently in the last couple of days, um, talking about jobs, 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 uh, and so on. So it's very much back to, to business almost, it seems, from that point of view. A um, few things about Trump then and his health. So basically, the medical team said that Trump has met and exceeded all the discharge criteria, uh, but is not entirely, quote, out of the woods will receive another dose of remdesivir before going home, before having another dose tomorrow. Um, so that was the main kind of side of things. On the stimulus side, where are we at with that particular story at the moment? Because that also is an instrumental one for market uh, movement right now. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin spoke by phone for about an hour on Monday, and we're preparing to talk again today. Although nothing has been agreed upon yet, and late trade reports saw GOP sources um, suggesting Senate approval of stimulus is still seen as doubtful for the moment. So definitely keep an eye out for any whipsaw price action that might come from any um, developments on that front. And as I said, Pelosi and Mnuchin will be talking at an unspecified time today uh, and so definitely that could be could be important what comes out of those discussions um, otherwise having a look at other news from overnight we did have the Australian central bank decision uh, I would say going off the market economist consensus no real surprises here they maintain rates uh, expected to keep their cash rate and three-year target rate um, at 0.25 percent so that's all very much expected uh, it reiterated guidance that will not increase the cash rate until progress has been made towards full employment uh, and inflation. But let me just bring the Aussie into shot and explain some of the recent price movement that we have seen here because there was a little bit of fluctuation and overnight. So when the actual release came out, we did see a momentary blip higher in the Aussie dollar. And if you remember what I was talking about yesterday, 
uh, there was quite a lot of the futures market position for a potential rate cut irrespective of the fact that economists expectations on the balance were for a hold so a little bit of unwind of that sort of momentary blip higher uh, in the Aussie but failed to sustain and since that point this kind of recommitment I guess for uh, further potential uh, to leave the door open for additional monetary stimulus as you can see here has just meant that after that move we've just decided to break down a little bit actually the most pronounced move overall in the Aussie has come as Europe has stepped into the market and I know it looks quite congested here on the chart but actually if you look at the price action on a, on a smaller time frame really it was a break of the overnight Asia Pacific session which saw that run down in price to where we're at at the moment uh, and as you can see now just keeping an eye on a fairly short term trend line going back to the 30th of September it's been tested a couple times and you break below there you've got that previous low that we've seen on Monday morning and the S1 here so a decent level of support might come in uh, down at 71.64 if we hold the break of that trend line uh, in the Aussie this morning uh, just having a look then at the calendar for today because it has been relatively light I mean other than that there hasn't been too much new um, breaking developments in other stories from the overnight session very much about how we ended yesterday was the the main theme so let's have a look at what else is happening we've just had the German factory orders come out this morning to so just to update you industrial orders in Germany for August came in at 4.5 percent above the expected 2.6 no real reaction to that though um, in either the euro the dax or the bund future um, the things i am looking out for today are mainly speaker based so there's not really too much in the way of major economic data today um, uk construction pmi is seldom a market mover for sterling currency uh, off the pmi is typically is the kind of least impactful out of services being the most manufacturing second construction third in the USA you do get trade balance and jolts job openings the main thing I'm really looking at is this which is a particularly busy speaker slate um, Christine Lagarde uh, giving pre-recorded Wall Street Journal online summit comments no text expected but she does speak again then officially on the 10th anniversary of the European stability mechanism that'll be at two o'clock and what's going to be quite interesting today to watch particularly in, in regard to the ECB, is you've got the president speaking and then you've got the chief economist, Philip Lane, speaking later on at 4.30, a separate event where he takes the stage with the Fed chair, Jerome Powell. But the reason why this is important is, as I discussed yesterday in the briefing, Lagarde and Lane have had quite contradictory uh, views over particularly the euro exchange rate. So we're interested to see how that plays out today and whether there is any continued contrasting uh, opinions as per sources were indicating last week about this split of opinion um, that's emerging within the European um, Central Bank Council. Jerome Powell then speaks at the NAB on global reset economics business and policy at the pandemic so it could be a very interesting speech and I do think that if anything is a lot more current than probably what the FOMC minutes that we'll see released tomorrow evening would be given their, uh, how dated they are by nature. Um, Powell speaks then at 3.30 London time. You've then got Harker and Kaplan, both are voters of a neutral disposition, speaking later on in the evening, and then non-voting member Bostic is also on the docket today. Um, and that's pretty much it. So overall, my assessment of things at the moment is uh, I'm pretty neutral about how I feel about the Open today. Um, equity markets obviously pushed up higher yesterday. Um, I don't see anything particularly new here that would make me feel like potentially um, we're going to just repeat that price activity. If I was looking at the S&P here though, as, a, as a reference point, I would, as I said on that other chart, potential I think for consolidation around these points. Just given the significance now, you can see quite clearly here the price activity for all, uh, October so far, that resistance turns support, just helping the, the bottom side of that range. Then on the upside, if we do break 3400 though, it does get quite interesting because there is a bit of clean air here to the upside. And you can see there's not a great deal of technical resistance until we would really get up to around the R1, which would also be at around those previous highs. You can see here on the left-hand side, which would be more around the 3414 type level. So 
I'm really quite interested to just keep an eye on things from, from that perspective. So um, a breach of those ranges on the downside, probably pivot, just looking to capture some of the initial lows that were seen on the break higher up um, before then the push came upon the Trump tweet last night. And then on the upside, the upper bound at R2 and those previous highs seen back in early mid um, September, if we breach the 3400, uh, or the 3388 kind of band of price activity. But I don't think it would be that surprising to see a bit of consolidation, still a US centric kind of session overall, I think will dictate things, uh, particularly given the fact that stimulus talks and an ongoing kind of monitoring of Trump's health uh, are still of the order at this present time, uh, and as well as monitoring a lot of these um, ECB president, uh, chief economist and Fed chair power comments. Okay guys, that is it from me, short and sweet this time. And so I wish you a good day ahead and I will see you later in the week. Thanks very much.